Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling in Zen. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're going to continue to continue to look at the Zim Neo mini site. Let's go to the site now at zimjs.com. Press on the logo up top here, or it's available in the examples. We may not keep the logo forever. It's a feature logo at the moment. But in the examples, you can find the Zim Neo mini site here. We have already done bubblings, uh, looking through these in general, looking at the code behind the Zim Neo logo, checking out the path and orient were previous bubblings from earlier uh, Zim, and then flip and speed was the last bubbling that we took a look at. So you want to see those if you're uh, brand new to this arrangement here. Now we're going to look at controls and extra, which are a little bit more advanced. Pop into the controls and watch what happens. As we move our mouse, the speed of these two animations change. So it's negative on the left and positive on the right. Now the rectangle inside or the square inside is looping. So the speed just keeps on looping it. Woo. But the other animation, the circle on the outside, only animates, only changes the speed here in the middle and then seems to stop. And that's because it's not looping. So what we've done is we've clamped. That's sort of important. Right now, animation is going by. We're over here on the right. You can see that time is going by. Time is going by. If we didn't clamp the single animation, time for that single, an the circle animation, time for that circle animation would keep on going by, keep on going by. And we'd have to go negative. We'd have to sit here and wait just as long for that to go negative. I'd have to sit and we'd talk and talk and talk and eventually we'd come back to the time that would make the circle go. So what we've done is we've clamped the circle animation to not care. And as, as soon as we go over its animation time, it just stays there. But then when we go backwards, it reverses in time. You don't particularly need to know this, but there is uh, an option to not do that. Maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want a, a scene going by, scene going by, and you want, want to come back the same amount, scene going by, scene going by, scene going by, and then see the original animation. So you can unclamp that. Oh, anyway, blah, blah, blah. What is really important though here is that we are controlling both of those animations from one place. And that's called an accelerator. We can put as many animations into that accelerator as we want, including background scrollers, so the Zim scroller, and also sprite animations. This all started with sprites. We wanted a sprite that would go different speeds, and we called that a dynamo. And we set up the accelerator to work with the dynamo. Now any animation, this is just a norm, not saying just, this is a normal animation, or two normal animations, and we've added those to the accelerator. So that is new to Zim Neo, Zim 9. Also new is the fact that we put the that accelerator into a motion controller and the motion controller allows us to control that with our mouse movement or with a joystick or with an arrow or with a mouse press or with a, a mouse drag whole bunch of, or a keyboard etc all right so let's see what that is like we'll reduce that pop on into the code for the controls example zim neo controls example using zim 9 We have made a circle. We're animating the circle to a scale of twice as big from true from its uh, current location. I think it's, that means it starts off at two and then it, anyway, and then it animates to its current location in three seconds. It's sort of just a way to reverse an animation if you want. With a back out, back in out ease. That's sort of neat as well. Do you see? And this is dynamic. Where we have that. Isn't that neat that the animation, when we scrub that animation, you can see sort of the slow motion back. Woo whoosh. Whoosh whoosh. So tweens are in there as well. Tween, and because it's in the animation, it will scrub through the easing of the tween. I mean, the easing. There's the back in and out. Dynamic true is important if we want to animate the speed 
or if we want to change the speed of an animation, we have to set dynamic true. And then here's the clamping that we were talking about. If by default it's true, if we clamp false, let's see what happens. Uh, which one is it? This one. So we refresh here. There it is animating. Now I'm going off, going off, going off, going off, going off. Now watch what happens when I come back. When I come, <laughs> when I come back, it did not clamp. It happened immediately. It totally did. Oh, we're on the Zim site. So there's, uh, sorry, we're looking at it on the Zim site. We want to then open it from here. Open in browser. <laughs> Right. If something doesn't happen as expected, then maybe check to make sure. So there, we're working with the right file. So there we are going, 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 going. We're animating, going, going, going. Now we come back. We have to come back, 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 come back. And there, it finally, it finally went. You see what I mean? So we have to wait the same amount of time, and that's what clamping does. Again, it happens also going backwards. I'm going backwards, going backwards. Normally, without clamping, I just go a little ways, and the animation should have already happened. But it doesn't. It have to have to wait. It wasn't clamped, so it has to wait until it comes back in time to, there's the action. All right, so most likely you won't need to turn off the clamping. But like I said, if you have a big long scene and you're wanting animations to happen at certain places in the scene, then you probably do want the clamping false. Moving along, there's the rectangle and we're animating that as well. It's dynamic as well if we want to be able to control the speed. Uh, nothing special in there. A looping, rotating rectangle. Here's where we add both of them to the accelerator. So an accelerator, if there's only one thing to put in, well, and you might not even, you may as well not use an accelerator. So we can pass in multiple objects, 100 different animating objects into the accelerator. And what that allows you to do is change the percent speed. These, these animations can be controlled with a percent speed property. And that was shown in the last bubbling to see what the percent speed we were changing it with a slider. So if we wanted to, we could change the percent speed of the accelerator with a slider. And that would change both of those things at the same time. But here we're throwing the accelerator into a motion controller. So we're saying, what is the target of our motion controller? That's the accelerator. Usually it would be, hey, some image that you're wanting to move with the mouse or with the keyboard, you would throw that image in there, or it could be a sprite, or it could be uh, anything, a container with something in it. Here we're passing in the accelerator, and we're using mouse move. So it doesn't have to be mouse move. By default, I think it's mouse press. So if we take that off and refresh here, it seemed to do nothing, but if we press down over there, then it goes that way, and if we press down over here, it goes that way. So that's mouse press. And if we press so somewhere in the middle, it is going little slow speeds. I'm not sure we can press. I think we can't press on the circle is what's going on. Yeah, so we'd have to turn the mouse enabled false on the on the circle to be able to press through it to the stage. Oh, there's another thing too on this. You can turn, you can specify in the motion controller which ones you're allowed to press on. So there it is. Mouse down includes rect circle. So if I turn on the fact that I can mouse down on the rect and mouse down on the circle to also control the speed, then we can refresh here. Now, do you see that? I'm controlling the speed even when I press on the circle. That's so that you can press on interf interface without changing the speed of stuff. You know what I mean? There might be some interface in here. You don't want it to start changing speed when you're pressing on interface. So by default, it only uses the, the background stage to press on. But if you, uh, if you have to override that, you can, which we've done in the reverse way of adding mouse down includes. Access vertical, so that's playing around with the motion controller to make sure that most of the features of the motion controller work. Here's the min percent speed of a negative number and the max percent speed. And then what is speed? 500. Uh, maybe that's the starting speed or something. 
Oh no, that's the speed in which it changes. So normally we're dealing with moving something along in the X and Y. And this is how many pixels it's moving. Uh, I can't remember how it goes. Uh, per pixel that you move your mouse or something like that. So this is quite responsive to bring it up to a speed of a 500. I think the default speed of the controller is how fast something would be moving to follow your mouse, like might only be 50 or something like that. Anyway, whatever. Motion controller, you can look it up. The gist of it is, though, we make our animations, we turn them to be dynamic true, we throw our the things that we're animating into an accelerator and throw that into the motion controller. You can just pick that up. Sorry, not adjust. Pick that up and put it right there and don't even bother. There it is. As a matter of fact, if we wanted to, we could pick up this rectangle, right? This stuff, throw this stuff into there, throw the other one. See it? We don't, don't even declare a circle. We just grab the circle, throw it into the, to there. No, it doesn't matter. One was a rect, one was a circle, whatever. I don't think the, mat, the order of it doesn't matter. There's that one in there, and the other one is here. Boom. So in one line, Here's our one line, a new motion controller with a, a new accelerator as the target that has a new circle, etc. And we don't do any of this stuff anymore. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, aside from our assets that we've got there, let's save that up and refresh it here. Uh, this is still on press. We have a one, we've done this in one line. Made two shapes, animated them, added them to an accelerator, and thrown that into the motion controller. All in one line. Neat. But with a, where the drag go, we want the mouse move. So by default, the accelerator uses a mouse, uh, a mouse click. Here's the mouse move, so it will follow our mouse move, and you can see there that we uh, also were trying out a press move to make sure that works, so you can do it with a press move. Now we're back to the mouse move. Very nice. That's the one that I wanted to see. How are we doing for time? Uh, can you handle another? That one went pretty quickly, didn't it? All right, let's handle another extra. Ooh. Extra is beautiful. Mm, yeah, no. I, I'm sure that you can handle another. Can I handle another? We made it through this one. On occasion, these bubbling ones, we something might happen. <laughs> something might happen. And that was a, a pretty nice one. And we took you through that already. It's, <laughs> hey, there's something happening. Uh, look at that. Will is, uh, I don't know, so, something's happening here on my, my Slack. <laughs> Who knows uh, what might happen? So uh, why don't we le leave it at that? <laughs> <laughs> my internet might fail. That, that's what could happen. Yes, uh, let's leave it at that before internet fails. And we'll come back and take a look at the extra. Extra is really, really important. So we'll leave that as a single bubbling. I love you. Hopefully all is well in your lives out there. Woohoo. And hopefully Zim can make your life better. So that is a what's bubbling. I, I am sure that it is made... Uh, my life a lot more interesting to see all these wonderful things uh, being made and, and uh, you know, uh, thinking about things that can be made. So I'm hoping that you enjoy this as well. If you do, make sure to come into our Slack channel, zimjs.com slash Slack. And uh, you're welcome to give us a million dollars. Yeah. Actually, I'm really not at all anything about the money. Uh, I like I like doing this. Of course, money's nice, but um, it's not in any way the reason to do this. So always use Zim. Never feel obliged to uh, <laughs> never feel obliged to give us anything. It's yours as well. Ciao. I'm Inventor Dan Zan or Dr. Abstract for ZimJS.com.